Hey, today what I wanted to do was talk to you about uh, my recent purchase of Claude Pro and more specifically how I've been using the extended capabilities of Claude Pro to uh, rewrite blog posts. So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. So right here is the uh, new um, post at Anthropic's website where they're introducing Claude Pro. And so the big deal with Claude Pro is recently, if you've been using it, uh, you've noticed that the capability to message Claude has been throttled back. I've also noticed that it's really difficult to write a blog post with Claude unless you do it section by section because it's limiting the amount of output that you get from Claude. So the big deal is you get five times more usage with Claude Pro. And I'm not going to read through this, but I'm just going to get into the particulars. Now, uh, if you're not in the United States or the UK, Claude Pro is not available to you quite yet. Uh, I know it will be in the future, but when, I'm not quite sure. So you get five times more usage than the free tiers with the ability to send many more messages. And of course, you're going to get priority access to Claude.ai during high traffic periods and early access to new features so that you get the most out of Claude. So the big deal uh, beyond those benefits is, you know, what does it cost? And right now, the monthly pricing is $20 a month. So they have decided to um, price out Claude Pro at the same price that ChatGPT Plus is. Uh, so it's completely competitive. So um, I jumped on it and I went ahead and subscribed to Claude Pro. So let's talk about using Claude Pro for rewriting blog posts. So here is a recent prompt that I wrote. And this is the original prompt that I wrote. And I, and I just said, you know, rewrite the following blog posts using these suggestions. Minimum of 3,000 words, write in a human-like fashion, a friendly tone of voice, an informational tone of voice, include a key takeaways and facts section, uh, you know, preserve any internal linking in the blog post. And the only reason I said that is if you happen to have a blog post you've already created and you want to rewrite it, um, and you have linking in it, uh, we'd, you know, why not try and preserve that linking so you don't have to redo it? Preserve any external links in the blog post. Add any additional sections and content to make it more SEO friendly. Uh, and delete any content that ma doesn't match the search intent of the blog post. Write it in markdown format. So this is my original prompt. I definitely am not an expert at creating uh, prompts for Claude or for ChatGPT. So I asked Claude to rewrite the prompt and just make it better. So then what I did is I said, what should I do to make this prompt better? So I entered the, the, my prompt, and then I asked Claude, what could I do to make the prompt better? So Claude rewrote the prompt for me which is great because this is what Claude needs to see to be able to rewrite a blog post for us and do it in the best way possible. So here's the Claude rewritten prompt. So I'm writing a blog post about, and then you put in your specific top topic for a target audience. Uh, put that in there. Uh, the current draft is around a thousand words. Could you please rewrite and expand it into a comprehensive comprehensive SEO friendly guide using these suggestions. And then based on my prompt, it's, it says, you know, expand the post to be at least 3000 words, use a conversational friendly tone of voice appropriate for the audience, focus on an educational informational style Add a key takeaway section at the end to summarize the core tips, include an FAQ section with five to 10 uh, frequently asked questions Add tables, bulleted lists, italics, and quotes where it increases blog post readability. Uh, retain all current and internal links. Keep any useful external links. In incorporate new sections, content, or examples as needed to make it more useful for the target reader. Remove any details that don't directly relate to the core topic and search intent. 
Use markdown formatting for easy conversion. Make sure to include relevant keywords where natural. And then the goal is to transform this into an in-depth polished, polished guide my readers will find valuable. Uh, so here, what I will do is I'm going to put this prompt uh, for Claude um, in the video description. But I just wanted to walk through it because I wanted you to see, you know, what the difference is between what I created and then what Claude created. So let's put this to the test. Let's see if this Claude uh, rewritten prompt, how well does this going to work? So I think the best thing to do is I'm going to go over to ChatGPT and I'm going to ask it to go ahead and write an article for me. So let me put in my prompt. So I'm going to have ChatGPT uh, write an article in GPT-4 since I have ChatGPT+. And I'm going to have it write about why are gravel bikes so expensive? And the target audience is new gravel bike riders. So let's let uh, GPT-4, ChatGPT, go ahead and write this article. All right, so ChatGPT is done. You know, and it's written this very, very basic blog post, which probably isn't even a thousand words. Uh, and I think, you know, it, it covered the subject, but obviously not at the depth that I would want it to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab our prompt uh, that Claude put together based on my initial prompt. We'll copy that. We'll go into Claude Pro. We'll go ahead and drop it in. And then in ChatGPT, I will see if there's, go ahead and copy that. Back to Claude. All right, so we have it placed in here along with the prompt. So now we're going to go ahead and have Claude rewrite this article. So off we go. So right away you can see Claude is definitely rewriting this article and going into much greater detail than the uh, article that ChatGPT created for me. Now, granted, the prompt that I put into ChatGPT was a very basic prompt. But I think what happens is when you put in this draft article, it sort of primes Claude Pro and helps guide it and helps it understand what it is you're striving for in an article. So I think it's useful. Um, and I think that you could take an article from GPT 3.5 and do the same thing if you decide to purchase Claude Pro. And as I'm reading through this, I really like a lot of what, what I'm seeing here. It's a very complete article. It's well done, at least to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this completes, and then we'll come back. All right, Claude has finished writing the article. And so I'll just skim through this with you so you can get an idea of the depth of this article. So uh, why are gravel bikes so expensive? An in-depth guide for new riders. It's got a nice, short, concise introduction. Uh, goes on to talk about what is a gravel bike, which is great because we're targeting, you know, people that are deciding to get into the sport or new in the sport. Uh, what's driving the cost, versatility and complexity, drive cost, premium materials drive cost. Very nice description of the type of materials that are used for the for a gravel bike frames. Um, and, you know, I, I have a gravel bike, so I can... I can definitely speak to uh, 
this with some expertise uh, as a hobbyist. So it talks about standards and technology driving uh, price, rugged and specialized components, which is true. Lower production scales, which is true. It's a niche type of bike, so they don't make as many. Uh, reputation from well-known brands. Uh, do they make cheaper gravel bikes and what the downsides are? How to get a gravel bike for less. I like that. It's got a very nice key takeaway section. It's got a good uh, frequently asked question section, question section. And the thing that I really like about it is from a, from a factual standpoint, you know, the average price for a new gravel bike is $1,500 to $3,000 with high-end models going six to $10,000 and budget-friendly around $800. So this is just spot on for today's bike prices for gravel bikes. And has a conclusion. So the one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to take this article that's been created and I wanted to drop it into an SEO optimization tool just to see how well uh, does it fare. Uh, because the one thing that we really didn't do is ask it to include specific uh, keywords, um, NLP keywords in the, in the text. So I'm just curious to see uh, how it's going to do. So I can never remember whether you copy at the top or the bottom of the article. It's the bottom. So we'll copy it. Now I happen to use Neuron Writer. You may have uh, Surfer SEO or Phrase or some other tool. Um, but let's go ahead and drop this into Neuron Writer. I did a content query on why are gravel bikes so expensive. So if you're not familiar with any SEO optimization tools, Typically, what they're going to do is guide you on basic terms and extended terms that you see here on the right-hand side that you'd like that you should have in your text for SEO optimization purposes. It also gives you some guidance on headings. So let's go ahead and drop that in. And one thing that I need to do quickly is convert this over from Markdown. So one second and I will do that. I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, so we're back. Here's Neuron Writer, the article's in there. I created it, I got all the uh, headings placed in and I did the Markdown conversion. So right off the bat, you see it's a score of 52, which isn't too bad. Um, 76 is the highest of all selected competitors. So the one thing we do not have in yet is the title. So as soon as we put in the meta title, that is definitely going to boost the score. I think it's going to get us quite a bit closer to the 76. So here we are at a 71. So when we go back up here again, now, Again, 76 is the highest of all the selected competitors. And the top 10 in Google have an average score of 56. And that, that just means that at a 71, we're already doing better uh, from an average standpoint than the top 10 in Google. We just aren't as high as the very best article in the SERP. So, uh, or as optimized as the, the best as, as the best article in the SERP. So what do we do? I mean, we could go through and we could definitely add more of these extended terms. Uh, and in the headings, same thing. There's plenty of H2 headings that we might be able to adjust and boost the score. In fact, I know I could easily do that. But I don't want to do that now. That's not the point of this video. It's just to show you that what I got out of Claude uh, comes out at a very good initial score. So now the other piece of this is let's go into originality.ai 
and let's just scan this for, uh, you know, do the AI detection and check the plagiarism and readability. So we have 2,100 words. We did ask it to write 3,000. It didn't. I think that what it wrote is, is it very acceptable? I don't think we need to go uh, more in depth than that because the articles that we're competing against aren't any longer than what we where we're at right here. So let's just go ahead and scan this and see how we how we do from an AI perspective. I expect that we're going to have some AI detection. Um, how much I'm not sure. All right, the scan is done. Uh, the AI detection score is better than I expected. Uh, you know, the article written with Claude Pro comes out according to originality is 99% original, 1% AI. So that is an excellent score. Now, again, I'll stress, you know, just like I do in all my videos, um, I think that eventually originality.ai will probably be able to start detecting more uh, Claude-based content in the future. Uh, at least that's what I think but I'm not sure. Now, before I get more questions about, well, what does Google think? Based on what the, the last information that I have from Google, all Google cares about right now is the content useful. It's not spammy. Uh, it answers the search intent and does a good job doing that. Now, does that mean that you just write AI articles and just... Uh, take them right out of the box and drop them into WordPress or whatever your tool is and uh, go ahead and post it. You know, no, you need to fact check this stuff and you need to just read through it and make sure that it makes sense. Now, it's easy for me to fact check this because I have expertise in this area. If you're writing about topics that you really aren't ec an expert in or have no background in, um, you know, you're just going to have to do your due diligence uh, because I think that does make a difference. It makes a difference to your readers too, especially ones that have some background in the field that you're writing about. So I'm not going to go into this any deeper except to say, uh, at least for this point in time, uh, Claude does a great job from an AI detection standpoint. Uh, from a plagiarism standpoint, it's 0% plagiarized. So that's awesome. Don't have to worry about making any adjustments there. And from a readability standpoint, you know, it's a 54.4. .4. It's not bad. It's not great. Um, but I think it's more than passable. So uh, that's rewriting an article using Claude Pro. Uh, again, uh, you'll find... Uh, the prompt in the video description. Uh, I will say that, um, you know, I showed Neuron Writer, I showed originality.ai. I happen to be an affiliate for both, but I use both tools and subscribe. Uh, well, I purchased Neuron Writer at AppSumo on a lifetime deal, and then I also um, you have pay for my own originality.ai subscription as well. So, uh, again, I hope this has been helpful for you, and until next time, take care.